looks very different too than uh, than Amsa. Like even if they were to play the same skin, you could probably tell like which is who is who just based on the playstyle and the option they go for. But we're going into pools here. Adam Kex versus uh, Red Blaze. So I don't know much about Red Blaze. Maybe you do. I'm guessing he's a local Swedish player. Uh, he is Swedish. I've heard him heard him speak Swedish, but <laughs> I have never really seen him at a tournament before. He has been very talkative, though. Um, oh, okay. Um, well, Adam Kex is probably the Peach, I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always, uh, always a Peach player, as far as I know. But uh, Red Blaze is off to an uh, early lead here as uh, Adam Kex drops the first stock. Yeah, a bit predictable there with the uh, down smashes on the on the platform there, and especially Marth, maybe even more than any other character, has a very easy time to just like you know bob and weave around that and then uh, hit it uh, hit you with this giant extended uh, hit boxes. Yeah, um, if Peach keeps on down smashing on the platforms, he has such an easy time coming in with the up tilts on the side platforms mm -hmm. or just the up airs or neutral airs, whatever you prefer. It's uh, kind of like this matchup is uh, it's a bit weird. Um, Marv technically wins it according to some, according to Armada, um, according to uh, I mean, if you look at the results between Music King and Armada, you, you'll see too um, how uh, if, uh, um, just the uh, Music King just sort of spaces around perfectly, and especially like now since he sort of found a way to get those kills early. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, this match right here. Um, on this level, I would say that Peach is sort of favored since uh, uh, I don't think that many Marvs on this level, I haven't really seen them sort of perform in the sort of early kills. Um, and that just means that Peach has more opportunities to get those early games, which she is much more prone to get uh, than Marv is to get the uh, early kills on her. Yeah. It also, like, you know, mute, you mentioned Mutiking Armada, obviously that is in the NTSC version of the game, yeah. where Marth actually has a reliable, like, low mid-percent finisher, whereas uh, in PAL, not so much, and you kind of have to work a lot harder, and you will tend to, at least in my experience, uh, kill more off the top and rely on, you know, like, side B up tilt, side B tipper up tilt, that kind of thing, or these F smashes at 130, 140 off the side. Uh, but yeah. it seems like a much grindier matchup for for uh, Marth and Pal. Yeah, I played a bit of this matchup in the past, N not really when I was at the level, like a level that I was happy with, but I <laughs> can definitely say that there is a very large, there's a large amount of grinding, and uh, it's <laughs> just uh, it's a very sort of irritating matchup almost. Mm -hmm. It's sort of doing the same thing over and over again. It can get uh, a bit annoying, of, uh, which is kind of sort of a mental aspect in this uh, matchup. Yeah. And there is a lot of, you know, 50-50s in this matchup too, which can be frustrating at times, you know, because, you know, if a Peach is coming in, odds are she's either going to try to dash attack you or she's going to grab you, you know? So <laughs> it's like the, the rawest 50-50 in the game. And if that is like how most of the exchanges go, where it's like a guessing game like that, it can get a little, uh, yeah, repetitive or frustrating. I can imagine. Yeah, um, I think also you might try to sort of solve the fifty fifties with a sort of suboptimal option. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, <laughs> Adam kicks uh, off stage here, kind of yeah. percent. Looks like Red Blaze uh, taking the yeah. game. Yeah, he did a sort of comeback right there. That's a very impressive game, I have to say, especially since I haven't seen him before. You know. Yeah. It's cool to see someone just uh, sort of show up. I suppose he's a Stockholm native, based on what it seems to say on his sweater. Does, does that say Stockholm? <laughs> <laughs> it does say Stockholm, yeah. Okay, so, so, so Red Blaze is uh, the person on the right in the camera. Uh, I think so. I, I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I me. <laughs> I'm very bad with faces. Um, well... Hmm. Because uh, I think I played Red Blaze um, earlier. Uh, he, I think he's the Marv actually, uh, the guy on the left. Yeah. Uh, so um, he is. Uh, I mean, he seemed to get. A, he had a pretty solid game plan. I think that uh, uh, I was on the same side with him and the Monio. Mm -hmm. So he seemed a little bit sort of less consistent than uh, Monio. He had a lot of decent setups. He played sort of like Muti King does actually. Seems to kind of mimic him. Uh, he had, uh, you know, he was just very solid all around. He had a lot of 50 50s. Mm -hmm. But he just sort of had uh, sort of something missing in the mental game. It, even in friendlies, he seemed to become annoyed. Yeah, that's usually not a, a good sign. But we have seen players, you know, who 
who actually can play really well while visibly annoyed or, or angry. Yeah. You know, like uh, even Leffen has mentioned this before that uh, in in the past he's he's played best when he's kind of got a chip on his shoulder and he's a little pissed off and and uh, obviously not the case so much more recently. But some players they fall apart when they get upset. Yeah. And some players for some reason that just like cause them to play extra well. So. It depends on what kind of person Red Blaze is, but you know he's, he's been doing good. You know, like the whole set so far, took the first game, and uh, in this game we we get to see how he plays when he's uh, behind. Because in the first game he kind of took a lead very early on and he just held on to it. Whereas in this game uh, he's been behind the whole game and and he kind of looks to be playing much the same way, which is uh, a good thing. And you see a, a flood from Adam Kex there as he air dodges and. Kind of gives up a stock at 74%, which is huge in this matchup. Some sort of semi flubs. They did don't, didn't really do much mm -hmm. since they were just jabs, but uh, he could have gotten a lot more off it than just uh, two jabs or whatever. <laughs> <else>. <laughs> um, so it, they're just sort of staying on each side of the stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, here you see a bit of uh, the pal problem. Yeah. <laughs> The difference is, it's kind of a lot. Uh, sometimes you can catch Peach off guard. I'm really liking what uh, uh, Red Blaze is doing with the turnips here, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, Marv has sort of, like his back air, it sends uh, Peach sort of upwards as well as sideways. So it isn't as effective as then the acid down there, of course. Um, though the down there impal could still be well, a great catch on the turnip pull there. Um, yeah. The downer can still be of somewhat use because it takes away Peach's float. Uh, her it, it forces her to float. Um, she can maybe get a punish. It's you know if she's in float and you hit her with the downer, she's going to have to up B. And if you're at lower percent, you might be able to get a punish off it. And Adam Cake's taking the yeah. second game, tying up the set here, at, uh, one to one. And um, yeah, uh, another thing with the, the pal down air is it's also a slightly more reliable combo starter uh, just because a meteor hit on the ground will always pop you straight up where spikes can send you, like you can DI them much more to the side, which uh, sometimes is good for Marth because a DI to the side can lead into F smash taper range, but uh, I would say slightly less reliable, especially at the as the percentages increase. Yeah. But FD here from uh, Red Blaze. This makes a lot of sense for me. Um, Adam Kex definitely seems to be, you know, trying to leverage the platforms a lot. Like we mentioned in game one, how he's trying to get those like uh, uh, slightly gimmicky uh, down smashes on the platform and hoping the Marth jumps into it. Whereas on this stage, that's just not an option. And uh, and Red Blaze has been really good, like you mentioned, also about uh, punishing turnip pulls. Like barely didn't punish that one, but he got him into the shield and got a shield poke for it. So still a good situation if if this is how you know. Uh, it's gonna play out in FD without the platforms. Yeah, and also if uh, Red Blaze, like I said and sort of noticed when I played him in friendlies, if he is sort of muticing esque he's mm -hmm. going to be able to make much more use of uh, a stage without platforms since, uh, well, of course, Marv isn't really a platform user in the, at least if you're trying to play like muticing. Yeah. Um, he just, you're just sort of working on walling out either on lower percent comboing with back airs uh, or, and just forward their back airs, neutral airs, and then on the higher percents, sort of making sure that Peach is always in the air and just trying to starve her off her offhands. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing I, I've noticed is that Adam Kex has pretty much the whole set been using normal get up from the ledge, just the normal stand up. And Red Blaze has been a little off on all of his punishes. Like, you, you see he's been trying to get it, but he's just, like, been F-smashing too early, F-smashing too late. And uh, that, that's definitely something that could have made this set a lot more in his favor if he if he was able to properly punish, because the, the option has always been the same. It's very predictable, and it, it's just a question of can you execute on, on the punish. Yeah, um, one thing that I've noticed is he was Ooh. doing a lot of... Well, the great punish right yeah, there. Big um, combo. He was doing a lot of pivot uh, forward smash in friendlies, mm -hmm. but here uh, he got like a bunch of four throws in a row, and he just kept on trying to do the wave dash forward smash, which which just isn't as guaranteed, and you don't have that precision that you want that you get with the pivot. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Adam Kex trying to fight his way back into this. Can he get the stock? This will be important if he does, and he does. Tie stocks here, 100% the difference, but 
Beach definitely not normally seen as a comeback character, but I think in this matchup she definitely is because it can be so hard for Mart to find that one stray hit. And as I say that, commentator's curse, he gets a weak hit F smash with the worst kind of DI and he gets a kill at about 100%. But uh, normally, that could be a very tricky situation for the Mars and the Peach can build up a lot of damage in that time. Yeah, uh, Peach can sort of... I mean, uh, I've encountered two scenarios. One where Peach is sort of suddenly turns very campy, which uh, for some people might be very hard to kind of uh, just manage. It's, sometimes for some people it's hard to um, just uh, sort of stay calm when the other person decides to just block out just like any sort of aggression. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Oh, I had another <laughs> thing to say, but I, I forgot it, but it's fine. Uh, it's, it looks like Red Blaze is just... He, 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 I think he's going to win this game. I, I have a hunch. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's, it's felt, felt that way since, uh, since early game one, and that could have been it. Um, almost looked like he, uh, he got the tipper up air, but I think that would have killed, so that must have been a weak air. It's in with the tippity tip of the up B there, and finally, yeah, tipper up air off the top. Taking the set 2-1. Good stuff to Red Blaze. Taking a, a known Swedish player in Adam Cakes. Like, obviously not like a top 5, top 10 player. But Adam Cakes has been around for a while. And yeah. uh, there's definitely a name...